face. You brother word. Oh, I got a hundred on the black. What the fuck is these two white boys doing? Y'all, this is a visual representation of me fighting against IRS. Ain't nothing connecting, cause baby, I ain't got it, period. <laughs> Lady girl from away, but we have culture conversation and community. And in today's video, I'm coming to you all with let me turn around, girl, and be professional. I'm coming to you all with Bad Boys LA review season one, episode one. I don't know the name of this episode, but y'all, this is messy and entertaining, but messy. So let's hop right into it. So, you know, they gave us a little theme song Is You a Bad Boy? You a Sad Boy? Okay, they gave us a cute little bop. And literally the episode kicks off with drama, 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 drama. But before that, they gave, they gave us our little introductions. The first person that we're introduced to is Kirk Franklin's son. Okay, I'm gonna refer to him as Kirk Franklin's son, like Daniel's son. Um, yeah, he just says that, you know, his dad, you know, he's he comes from a music background. He tried to go to the same path, but he could not. Second person we're introduced to was Anthony. He's a very handsome Spanish guy um, from Houston. He's like, I'm the number one Houston club owner. I'm the number one Houston promoter. He seemed like he has a coin. The third person we're introduced to was Curtis. I forgot about him. He says, I'm a bad boy because I fuck bees and I got two girlfriends, girl. Congratulations, it's unbelievable. You have two girlfriends. The third person we were introduced to was Dylan, um, 931 baddie or something like that. He said he's the baddest out of Tennessee. Um, he's 22 years old and he's like, I'm, I'm just a bad boy because I fuck B. Ooh, I'm, I, girl, not me trying to assist myself saying, <laughs> girl. Y'all get what I'm saying. Y'all know what the man said. He also said he's about his bag. We'll have to see about that. The person we're introduced to is Milan Christopher. Or Christopher Milan. Um, I think Christopher Milan is so handsome. I can't help myself. He is such a cutie. I love Christopher Milan. I think that my opinion of him may change and seeing him on the show. We're gonna have to stick around and see what it's giving. It does tell us or remind us that he was the first openly gay reality TV star. He's been on, he's graced the cover of Paper Magazine, you know, the same magazine cover that Kim Kardashian was on, like, you better go off. And he also says, you know, like, he an OG in this game. He's 36 and he's from Chicago. I'm like, oh, okay, he's from Chicago. He gives me very much real nigga vibe. And introduced to Mula Mo, and he's handsome. He has a radio station, a clothing line. He sell cars, a little pussy on the side. I don't know, <laughs> I'm making that up, y'all. He said he owns a car dealership and he's about his money, hence the name Mula Mo. Then we were introduced to Darrell's, okay? What a money reside, what a money reside, okay. He was like, y'all were introduced to me coming out of a 2021 uh, Ford Pilot. He'll probably never forget that car. Um, and he was like, I'm 24 years old. I'm from a small town outside of um, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I think Darrell is gonna bring it because we haven't seen him. I thought he was like this really happy-go-lucky type of boy. He's messy. Then we're introduced to William the Baddest. He reminds me of the dog on um, Friday After Next, Chico. Okay. Then we have Gutta K. Okay, Gutta K is a cute Okay, from around the way. Gutta K is from Flint, Michigan. And um, he's a cutie, period. And it seems like pretty much this cast just came to be from being like having viral moments on the internet. Okay. Episode kicks off with Andre, Andrew, and Milan beefing. And, um, you know, they're just going back and forth dragging each other. Milan was just like, I want, you know, his, his, eggplant suckers to shut up because he was in my DMs trying to suck my eggplant and that was loud it said the third. Andrew's pissed off about that. I would never sleep with you and I would never sleep with you. I would never hit you up. You look dirty. You look dirty. I would never sleep with you. He's going off like, and you're fat and you're dirty. Andrew says, I seen your porn tape and it ain't giving what it's supposed to give you. <laughs> like not the porn tape. And Andrew is just dragging him. This is your, this might be your last gig. Be nice. Be nice. I'm gonna show you how to be rich. You better be nice. Christopher Milan is pissed off because like we're at a, we're at our promo shoot and you're already beefing and dragging and doing all of this. I don't like that. And the next scene is apparently another shoot and Andre is still beefing with the girls. Andrew was talking about you know he's getting his makeup done. The king is here. The king of LA is here. The king is here. And again he's putting this very much like I'm here and y'all here. You are the lowest paid here. I don't even know why you're talking to me. And apparently they only got like 10 or 14 racks. It was a highest paid which is ridiculous 
um, Nasus Network trying to, uh, you know, exploit them for some exposure. Okay, they're not even getting a check, girl. Like, come over here and act the fool on this show, and you can get some exposure. Um, anyway, he's going off. He's going off. Andrew going off. Well, I'm gonna teach you how to be rich, and you know. And then my whole thing is like, listen, all of these girls, don't none of them really have a product. I don't think. So all y'all are really just selling Instagram from out. So Andrew, you're richer because you've had your account longer. You're instagram promo rates are more expensive your book you know rates the book you are more expensive i don't understand william the baddest chico um was like you drive a toyota corolla you drive a toyota corolla and shout out to everybody driving a toyota corolla i drive a nissan girl okay gotta try to tell andrew to chill because you're gonna get mopped he was like ain't nobody gonna mop you i'm gonna i'm gonna wrap you up with your braids i'm gonna wrap you up with your braids andrew was just going up he is just so funny to look at to talk about it's just a mess. They move him to another side and the white boys, Dylan and William slash Chico, starts talking about him and you're fat and you're ugly and you're this and, you know, Andrew was like, you're trash, you're trailer trash and you're trailer park trash. Just, you know, whatever. Dylan's in a confessional. Like anytime somebody says something racist from Wild from we, we want to fight. Like, Nick, mm. like, boy, you from Tennessee. You probably want saying something racist, sir. And we're going to get into these white men appropriating black culture with all of their mannerisms and this and this and that and this and girl but i'm not gonna lie andrew was 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 shaking it up because he had them girls pressed so much so that they had to have production take him outside because tensions got high okay they were going so far as to jumping over gates to try to get to him jumping over hopping over fences um it just seems like those girls were really pressed about andrew and he was only saying some words y'all know he's not a fighter he's gonna come and tell he's not a fighter so why are y'all so pressed? The security had to stop and talk to the fellas like, look, nobody's jumping Andrew. When we don't even ever hear the security actually talking and saying something to this actual staff, like, and, and recording it. So we know that this this episode or this season, I should say, is gonna be really, really messy. Ellie's getting her makeup done in the next scene and she's like, I just wanna go over some ground rules. And you know, we have expensive things in this house and I don't want nothing being broken. Like, yeah, you know those rules are just for show and you know, <laughs> Good luck. And the next thing we have the boys uh, getting into the courier and they're all excited. They're like, wow. And Milan notices that Chris, that um, Andrew is not in the courier. He's like, you know, this girl talked all this shit and she's not even gonna show up in the courier. Like what a punk B, blah, 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 still popping off. And then, you know, the girls, or the girls, they're all excited to be in the courier van. Like, I can't believe I'm a bad boy. I've been watching the bad boys for so long. But a lot of y'all are like, mature. Okay, why are y'all so pressed about being bad boys? But I'm not gonna do that, because that's not what y'all here for. But y'all know I can if y'all want me to. Anthony, the Spanish one, he's handsome. He was just like, yeah, so you know, we the bad boys, we the bad girls, we the baddest bitches. So the boys in the back, the straight boys, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho, I think it was Mula Mo. Mo the money it was like no 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 we 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 we're not gay we're straight we're strictly coochie whatever he said i don't know what the boy said but he was just saying like nah we're, we're we're straight back here so but i feel like anthony was just trying to you know give give each other their props like we here y'all we made it and you know mula money was just like ho 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 but like you know he he announced it very strong and assertively like what you why are you doing a lot why are you doing all that for huh and then i seen a lot of people on zoom talking about some ain't no straight man gonna go into a house full of gay men to whatever and then like what y'all feel about that do y'all feel like a straight man can go into a house full of gay men and promote whatever it is that he promoting and get his shine or or is it sus? I want to hear what y'all think in the comment section because if it was a straight woman going into a house with a whole bunch of gay women, it wouldn't be the same conversation. Now would it? Or would it? Let me know. Hop down. I want to know. Milan is starting to ask the guys like, you know, who's who and what's what. So Milan asked Karen, so like, are you into women? Are you into are you into guys? And um, Kirk Franklin's son was basically like, oh, I'm just gonna leave that as questionable. And then um, Ari, all all the gay boys was like, okay, we know what that means. We are gonna leave that right there. Just say you're bisexual or curious. You know, like it's it's. I mean, I guess you know he ain't trying to give it to everybody in one wop. So. I can dig it too. If you want to keep playing coy, play cool. I like it. We here for it. But we know, sis. Milan X got a pretty much how he identifies. Like, are you trans? Are you a girl? Like, what is it? And he was just like, no. F all that trans stuff, which I hate. Like, you know what I mean? You could just be like, no, I identify as this. And she's like, you know, he's like, I got good 
puss. I got good booty. I got good this. I got good that. So Milan is so confused. So like, all right, that's what you, you like. Oh, you like, you know, women too. And then Anthony had to clarify, like, no, he's saying that like he can he can switch it up, but he's still a boy at the end of the day. I feel like you know, gutter could have kind of piped down a little bit because Milan is doing the PC thing, like. You are involved with someone, it's appropriate to ask, what do you like to be referred to as, or whatever, what have you. Rail of uh, the Rail had asked Milan who would he sleep with if he had to choose anybody. And Milan has said, I like Moolah. Moolah's handsome if I had to choose somebody. And Moolah's in a confessional, like, this is a big three. It looked like he bench presses 300 pounds. Why is he worried about me? Moolah, you've been in prison before for five years. Relax, bro. And we start getting on the white boys. So they like, so your name is 931 baddie and yours is William the baddest so who really is the baddest and William says something cute like we'll just have to see and then everybody like oh I would have just been like no it's me so the Texas no the Tennessee boy 931 is Tennessee Eric was like oh well I heard that you was talking about me and saying that a lot it's in the third and he was just like, nah, I wasn't saying that. And then he, then William was just like, you do realize that we don't only see white boys and they trying to like, you know, make us fight each other. I'm like, William been around some black people before because that's definitely the type of shit we do. And, and he was like, no, I'm just saying because, you know, you, you was talking about me. And he was like, when did I say that? When did I say that? You can tell William didn't want a whole bunch of all that drama, but Dylan wanted all the smoke. So Gutta chimes in and was like, no, well, you did say that Dylan was your understudy. And then from there, Dylan was like, okay, you know, Dylan starts popping. Dylan starts calling William out. Out. He basically throws a drink at him as they're pulling up to the house and they're like pull up. Oh, I want to fight now Dylan and uh, William try to fight girl <coughs> Yes, I don't know what that was the shit is making me sneeze because whatever that was girl <laughs> It was not what it was supposed to game. They fight the air. They doing all this weird weird choreography, okay and it was just so Rel Darrell is drunk. He's like, if you don't beat that hoe, I'm gonna be. Uh, y'all got y'all got five minutes. If you don't beat that hoe, I'm gonna beat your ass. If you don't beat that hoe, I'm gonna beat your ass. You know, he's saying it all in the New, uh, New Louisiana style. And they try to fight. So Duran, Duran, not Duran, because Duran is it. Okay, Duran is it. Don't you get stuck in love with me? Shout out to Duran. If y'all listen, if y'all listen to his music, make sure y'all uh you know put it in the comment section and give this video a thumbs up. Anyway, um, Darrell or Relly, I have to call him something, Relly B, whatever, um, was like moved to the side and then starts fighting um Dylan. Dylan gets pushed all into the bushes and then his face is all scratched up. Darrell is like falling all over the ground, girl. He's drunk, drunk, drunk. He ain't even the youngest one there. Now he's 24. Which is not excusable, but we have to make some allowances because you know these youngest don't know how to handle they lick. You know what I mean? That Tito's is on them. You know what I mean? Whatever they drinking on, he probably look he look like he's drinking brown liquor because he's just acting crazy. Rail was drunk. I'm talking about drunk, drunk, dangerously drunk. Out comes Natalie. It's like y'all not even in the house and y'all fighting already. What is going on, Natalie? You know exactly what's going on, but Natalie, Natalie did seem frustrated because like they didn't even get into the house yet. Dylan is over to the side, girl. He's scared. He like I'm not going back over there. Y'all gonna jump me? Oh, you Dylan, come, come here, Dylan. Dylan, come here, baby. No, I ain't walking over there and getting jumped. Girl, Dylan was scared for his life. You hear me? Milan Christopher went over. Like they're not gonna jump you because I'm right here, and I, you can tell Milan he ain't trying. Ain't nobody trying to fight him for real, for real. And then Darrell was like, "Who would you who 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 jumped who?" He was like, "I didn't jump him. I I hit him from the front, and the bushes hit him from behind because he had like a little scrap scratch on his face. So he was like, oh y'all felt like I he was jump. All right, cool, no problem. I'm gonna fight William then. Starts fighting William. William is tussling, girl. They was windmilling for their life, honey. Windmilling. I ain't seen windmill so good since back in the day, Jerry Springer. You hear me? They windmilling." Going off the rail is on the floor. He's just sitting there, and then he tried to get up and started trying to fight security. The rail was drunk. They had to put him on the courier because um, he was just out of control. They had to separate him. He was like, "Where my drink at? Where my drink at?" Natalie had to um, really actually say, "Take his drink from him," which is very childish and juvenile. I wish him would say, "Take a drink from me." Uh -huh. Girl, that's disrespectful. He had the face on too, like a drink. Take a drink from me. I wonder. I wonder if Darrell really remember what he actually did the next day. I probably. I doubt it though. Anthony, Darrell, and 
Milan started talking like, why was you trying to fight him? You look like you was giving bully and da 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 da. And Darrell is still like drunk out of his mind and can't really talk to him. He's not comprehending. Then Natalie tries to come out again and do like an official into the house, y'all. And he, she was calling Darrell out like, Darrell, you're corny. You're sitting in this van, needing like a babysitter. Like we didn't sign up for this. Why are you acting like this? Which he, he deserved that type of talking to. She says that y'all gonna be sharing rooms and one room is a master. Milan was like, oh, that's mine. That's mine. Milan is, is making no mistake about it that that room is his. And she pretty much announces, you know, y'all go get y'all rooms and everybody's like running to the rooms. Like y'all are really just doing this for like recording purposes. Cause I wish I would be fighting over a room. Even at 22, nobody's doing that. It's that everybody's trying to get their room. William said, listen, I, I told the producer to come to the side with me and um, Darrell and uh, Dylan, because I'm not here to fight. That's not me. That's not, that's not my type of bad boy. Okay. I'm like, you better know your ministry. Okay. Cause fighting is not it. And you know, I'm just here to get a bag. And Darrell was like, well, I, I already beat you both y'all up, so I'm not gonna fight y'all no more. It is what it is. Mula finds a separate room and um, some of the, Anthony comes in, Gutter comes in, and they kind of like sitting on his stuff and leaning all around. And Mula got upset, like, I don't really want y'all in here. And Anthony feels some type of way about it, but he kind of plays it off like, girl, come on, let's get up out of here. Which, on one end, it's like, what if we just don't want you in the space? What if he just wanted to take a moment to himself? Or is it really just what they're saying? Like he don't want to be tempted with the wandering eye and doesn't want those gay men around him. Again, I want to know. It's still too early for me to put to put what I think on it as far as Mula and him feeling like he's DL or he's treated. Or even simply just curious. Like it's too early to tell. Gutta and Carrion are going to the same room and they have this really cute flirtatious exchange. And Carrion's in the confessional like, oh, I'm just trying to get what I need to get out of this situation. So I gotta do what I gotta do. But if y'all look, if y'all peeped in that last scene, he did a quick one of these, the look, you get what I'm saying? He was looking, so you act like you flirting to get that room, but really you trying to set your sights and sink your teeth into gutter. Cause we all know, you know, gutter was on, you know, massaging his little beard and everything. Like nobody's doing that for no room, sis. It's okay, Kirk Franklin's son. And the fact that he is Kirk Franklin's son on the Zeus Network, on the Bad Boys Club house, doing the things that he's doing is just iconic in itself. So shout out to Natalie for pulling that one. Anthony goes into the master bedroom and starts to twerk and dance on the bed and the bed actually breaks. And I'm <laughs> That's the room for the king, baby. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm like, girl, that's me trying to be sexy for my man. That's <laughs> I promise you, y'all. And it was funny. He was like, I can tell y'all get this bed from Ikea. Like, girl, no, you just a little big. And that's okay. Then I don't know where Milan Christopher comes in there. And they get the tussling because Milan is like, no, I already told y'all downstairs that I was going to have this bed and this is what I'm doing. Milan is bullying and bogarting. He's definitely trying to assert himself. He's definitely trying to assert himself as the alpha of the group, clearly. And Natalie calls the guys down to basically show them that um, Andrew is not going to be joining the cast. He refuses to come back to the house because they're gonna jump him and good for him because uh first of all he don't need nobody he don't need no help looking a fool anyway and if you doing all this and you get beat up and we know he's jumpy from the last who was he with he was jumping and everything on the live he ain't a fighter so i think it's in his best interest to not be there and uh, lumi is sitting there like but you cashed the check already you cashed the check. You tried to. Yes, I did. I tried to cash that check and it's mine and it deposited, period. That's me, girl. <laughs> I don't give a damn. I don't care. Whatever. So in the process of that, um, Natalie's like, that's not what the fans want to see. And he's corny. He's a coward. He's not a bad boy. He's a coward. And I'm like, girl, she dragging it. It is what it is. That man is like in his 40s, I'm imagining. Um, I don't know, he might not be that old, he just churchy. Uh, at the end of it, they were talking about it and Milan Christopher says to Darrell, I don't like how you fought both of those white boys and I feel like you were giving bully and I don't like bullies. He turned around, threw the drink in his face and they start fighting and the, uh, Ms. Milan Christopher and Darrell starts fighting. It looked like Milan's gonna get the best of Darrell because we know he's still drunk and he's little, really, really tiny, teeny weeny little thing. And Milan Christopher, we don't need nobody fighting for them on behalf of those white boys. They already they already squashed it. You doing this is just extra. And it's annoying because we didn't need it. But y'all, this season is gonna be juicy. It's gonna be juicy so much. 
So much for Zeus talking about we don't condone bullying and violence because baby, that's all it's given. That's what it gave the whole entire time. So we're going to have to see how that works out. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. Are y'all are y'all excited to watch or what? Like, it's given very much ratchet reality TV, period. Like the video, it helps me on the YouTube algorithm. If you're new, hi, my name is Jeray. Subscribe, it's free. It really helps me on the YouTube algorithm. And I'll be reviewing all of the ratchet ghetto TV shows like this, okay? Clearly. As always, I'm sending you much love and much light, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.